So let's start taking a look at how we actually program and sequence patterns um, in Reason 6 and how we transform something we're playing to something that we can play back and use to trigger um, devices themselves. Now, essentially, there are two different forms of programming or sequencing we can use. There's linear sequencing, which uses the actual sequencer, and that's what you saw me using. Let me just make sure that's fully open. That's what you saw me using um, to uh, trigger Kong in that initial pattern. And we'll look at that in a second. But there's also step sequencing. And this is using the redrum. Now, in the redrum, it's very, very simple. We just select sounds and we can just activate steps. And it's really a retro system that's been around for a long time, that's been in uh, older drum machines. And it's a really nice way of programming. So we'll also look at that. So with these two different styles in mind, let's look at linear sequencing first uh, and using the sequencer, and then we'll move on in the next video to step sequencing. So we've got our Kong drum machine, and when we create a device in Reason, the sequencer will automatically create a track for us. So let's make a new Kong, and I'm gonna shut the sequencer down a second, go back to the rack, and we'll go right down to the bottom of the rack, and we'll double click, or right click even, and we'll create a Kong. Uh, let's just go to Instruments, and we'll go to Kong Drum Designer. And as soon as we do this, you can see it flash. Um, we can go to the sequencer, and there's our new Kong track. And you can see that every drum sound within the kit is named down here on the left. And it's a really useful thing. Normally, you have to do that yourself, um, or it's just not named at all. You've just got some keys. But in this case, uh, you can see that we've got everything named. So it's really, really clear exactly um, what we're doing. So if we go back to the rack and we change our kit to say the pop kit. Now, if we go back to the sequencer here, you can see that things have changed very slightly. We've got some different names and this is just because we've got different drum sounds loaded in the new kit. We've got Kong selected here. Uh, I've got it, I'm gonna solo it and we can just go ahead and hit record. Now, if you open the transport, we can make sure we've got a click track. Uh, we can turn our click level down a little bit. We've got a pre-roll uh, click as well. So before I hit record, we're going to get a little bar of um, of clicks to, to sort of guide us in. And then we've got two bars selected. Our left and right locators are here up to bar three. So if I hit record, we're ready to go and start recording something in. Now, my playing was really sloppy there. It was deliberate, trust me. But this was just to show you that we can knock things into line. Now, if I select the part, you can see that it's highlighted. And now we can see our drum sounds within the, the sequencer itself. I'm going to click this snap area to 16 bars. This is a really nice grid to work with when programming beats. But you can see that now everything's slightly off. So if we select all, select one of them, select all with Command and A, we can now go to edit and quantize notes. This can also be um, triggered by command and K. The shortcuts are always available to the right here. Now quantized, it sounds very different. Now some of them were quantized a little bit too drastically. So we can move these around. Let's move this snare. And that's pretty much what I was after. Now we'll take the click off, leave the pre on in case we need it later. And there we have a really basic beat. We can see exactly which sounds, and by the way, you can play the sounds to check what they are down here, but we can see exactly what sounds they're playing back on. And if we want to add extra sounds, we can either um, play them in with the keyboard. So let's say we wanted to add a hat. Pretty cool, but again, pretty sloppy. So let's use our command and K. And you can see that's knocked into line with the quantize. And the quantize will uh, will refer to this snap area here. So if you've got it set to 32, 
it'll quantize to the nearest 32nd of a bar. In this case, it's quantizing to the nearest 16th of a bar. So let's play that back. But we can also add things manually. Now, if we use the pencil here, we can add in events manually. Uh, we could add little rolls into the, into the hi-hat, and we can change the velocities of each of these. If you wanted a little trill or something a little faster, let's take it to 30 seconds and you can zoom in. Now I find the best way to zoom in, you can zoom in using these plus and minus buttons down here, but I like to use this slide and scale. You can zoom right in to exactly where you want to be. Now we're on 30 seconds, so we can take the velocity down and get a little fill going. Bring the zoom out a little bit. So that's great. We've got a really basic beat, but we can go further than that. And we can start to actually add sounds that we didn't even record using this manual method. So let's add some toms. I'm going to put it back onto 16th. And let's have a listen to some of these toms. Maybe there's some percussion up here. And some shakers and a snap. That's quite cool. So let's add one of those. Now you can not only bring the velocity down in this area here, um, as you saw me doing before, but you can also select the, uh, the part or the event and type it in manually. So if we want to lower velocity in a busy section, this is quite a useful way of doing it up here in this velocity window. So there you have a basic introduction to how the sequencer works and how it can trigger devices. Um, and we'll be using this throughout the tutorial uh, to create our beats. But we'll also be using step sequencing or step programming, and we'll be using the Redrum drum computer for that. And that's exactly what we're going to look at in the next video.